My name is Erin Johnson. I teach in the ninth grade humanities. Um, over the course of my years here, I've taught the curriculum that's been taught in the ninth through eleventh grade. So I know pretty much all there is to know about what goes on in those particular classes. So when we do have a question and answer session, please feel free to come and ask me about it. Not only ninth grade, but tenth, eleventh, twelfth. I'd be happy to talk with you about it. The humanities course, as Erica alluded to earlier, is a two-part class. It's a social studies and a language arts. So you get all of your social studies, the whole idea of what's going on in the government. You get geography. You get the history. All of that you're going to get through some conversation with me and a lot from the texts that you get to read. Um, then you also have the in language arts component. So you've got a lot of your grammar, a lot of writing. You will write about 50 papers for me next year. 50, yes, oh, I saw that look. <laughs> that was the dread look, right? Um, you will, yeah, you will write a lot for me, and you will learn how to do it well, so that by the time you get out of here, it's a piece of cake. I've had students come back and tell me they get more sleep in college than they did in high school, because they know what to do. They know how to study, they know how to write, they can just whip those papers out, and it's great. You will do just fine, I will walk you through it. I know I have already made some people extremely nervous. So, I will walk you through it. I'm not just going to dump it every, everything right into your lap. Uh, but do keep in mind that the first five weeks of school you will have to thousand pages. So, yeah, now I got to look for Hunter. <laughs> All right, ninth grade, ancient Greek and Roman history and literature, the earliest parts to Western civilization. We start off here with Homer, we'll go through until right around the time Greece is gonna be taken over by Rome. So we'll cover Homer, we'll cover Thucydides, uh, we'll cover Herodotus, and we'll cover some of the ancient Greek tragedies. And I saw as I was listing out some of those people, a lot of blank stairs. I get it, it's okay. Roman history, we start from the very beginning then of Rome, we will read the Aeneid, you read things like Livy, you read Polybius, we read some of the, the great philosophy. We will, in the Greek times, talk about Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. In the Roman times, we will talk about Aurelius, uh, Lucretius, Epictetus. We'll talk about these big picture things like Paul was talking about earlier as well. So one of the big conversations that we have, if you think about it for just a second, is what is virtue? <clears throat> right? People can give you examples of things that are virtuous or what characteristics consist of, of the, you know, the idea of virtue, but what actually is virtue. So we're going to grapple with things like that over the course of our discussions. When they leave me, uh, they'll go into 10th grade with Mr. John Miller. He teaches the fall of the Roman Empire to the Enlightenment, so that's where we'll cover things like Boethius, like Dante. Um, moving all the way up through into William Shakespeare. 11th grade is Enlightenment through the Civil War. A lot of the founding documents for our country, they'll look at those pretty in depth. Um, but they'll also look at some of the other things that were going on in other parts of Western civilization. So they'll compare our Bill of Rights to the Declaration of the Rights of Man <coughs> for the French Revolution. Um, once they go through uh, Civil War and into the Reconstruction time period, they will go into Mrs. Seals' class and we'll cover uh, reconstruction to modern, postmodern uh, works. So that's sort of your timeline for high school humanities. Um, the Humane Letters program is just that, and it's focused on these great books of Western civilization. It's really in depth. We talk about a lot of information. We cover a lot of information, a lot of books. I know I heard somebody say, my friend was just talking about they had to read three books this year in their history. <laughs> they read three for me, I think, in the first four weeks of this semester. So, I'm stacked of books. It's great. <laughs> it is, it is great. <laughs> like I said, we talk about geography, grammar, composition. And those are embedded in everything that we do throughout your humanities program. It's not just my class, that's what we really focus on. We want to make sure that people know their history, but beyond that, that they know how to communicate. Not just verbal, but written. Okay, that's why they write so much for me, that's why they speak in a Socratic discussion, that's why they take things like logic and rhetoric. Your kids will get really, really good at arguing. Sorry, 
They take logic and then they take rhetoric. Disclaimer. We should maybe add that. <laughs> it's how the Socratic method. We sit in a circle and we discuss these big things. It's an open discussion. We don't raise hands. I mean, in the beginning of the year, they sort of have a hard time with that. By the end of the year, it's discussion. It's open. People listen to each other. They counter those arguments with their evidence from the text. It's great that you think that, but why? Give me some backup. Give me that evidence. Where in the text, what are you talking about? That's what we do with the Socratic discussion. It's finding these big ideas and then really talking about them. By the end of the year, my input into the discussion is very limited because they can really take off and dive into this and describe and discuss just about everything that we need to talk about. And then the subject matter is ordered by historical time periods, as I mentioned on the previous slide, with 9 through 12 going from ancient world to modern day. Okay? It's the defending, understanding, perspective, all of those things, answering the why of subject. Why does this happen? Why do people act this way? Why did it turn out this way? How could it have changed? Because at this particular point, students have this natural desire to persuade, self-express, and convince. Hence the rhetoric argument stage. Okay. It's at the root, the roots, the foundation of everything we talk about, the foundation of classical education, the foundation of what the school's been founded on, is this idea. Okay. Grammar, logic, rhetoric, and everything that we do. <coughs> this is going to be the time for question and answer. Did I, did I end it better? Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> please feel free to ask us anything that you want. But right when you came in, there was something up on the screen. It's called the Do Now. This is what your kids will be able to get in high school. This is something that I never got in high school. I'm assuming that most of your high school experiences were not like this either. And think about that. See if this is something that you would have really enjoyed. Because guaranteed, walking out of here, you will have the best education you can possibly get. I completely believe that, and I'll even push it one step farther and say, I believe it so much that I send my own kids here. I have a second grader here now, and a third grade next year, and I have a kid in the So if I didn't believe in it, I would We will have a question and answer. I know we need to have Ethan come on up here. So why don't right now all of the teachers that presented, why don't you come up here so we can answer questions as they come.